Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a pretty simple sign up form using React and also Firebase uh, version 9. Well, in this case, uh, right now at the time, November 2022, we have uh, Firebase 9.13 or something like that. So I'm going to be using that one. So the first thing that you want to do is have like a, just create like a React app. In my case, I'm going to use uh, one of the templates that I have for some of the tutorials that I've made before. And if you don't know how to create a React app, I have a video on my channel, so you can check that out. So once you have done that, you can come back. So just CD into whatever directory you have. In my case, it's styling. And I'm just going to say, um, I'll just say npm install Firebase. So issue that command. And while we wait, we're just going to go and create like a Firebase project. I'm just going to name it testing2. Just say continue. I'm not going to use this. Say create project and let's just wait for it to be created. All right, so it says that the project is ready. So we'll just say continue. And here we'll say where it says web. And let me just make it full screen. So we'll just give it the same name, testing2. Say register the app. And this is a configuration that we're going to need. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to go back uh, to Visual Studio, go to the source folder, and I'm just going to create a file called Firebase.js here. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to paste what I copied from the Firebase website, which is the initial configuration. All right, and then I'll just say continue to console. Let me just run the app so that you know what I have here. So it's one of the, the apps that I was using before once again. It's just like a template, but we'll change it and we'll add like a like a simple form so that we can, you know, uh, capture uh, users' emails. All right, so the app that I have is just this. So what I've the only thing that I've done is just change the background, just uh, just to make it look uh, better. So you just go to index.css, and you can change the background to white if you want to. I just left that color. And yeah, so let's just come to Firebase.js, in here. So if you go to the Firebase documentation, so you want to go where it says Cloud Firestore, and just get it started. And this will tell you how to import whatever you need. So if you go to here, so it, it says initialize. So we have to initialize the Cloud Firestore first. So to do that, we need this. We already have the, the app. So let me just go back to Visual Studio and we'll just create another line that says get Firestore and I just grabbed that from the docs and here we're just going to create a new variable called db and db for database and here we'll say get Firestore and then app and then we're going to export this because we we need it we're not going to we're going to use it somewhere else as well so export ab and db okay so now that we have the configuration ready, we can start uh, creating our Cloud Firestore. So go to Firebase, the, the dashboard, then go to Firestore database. And then I think I'm already here. So yeah, just go to Cloud Firestore, which is the one that we're going to be creating. And just go to Create Database. We'll use this uh, production mode here. So you just click next. So this depends where you're located. So I'm in the US, so I'll just keep it the way it is. But if you're somewhere else, just change that. Let's go to enable. All right, so once you have created your database, you want to go to rules. And here we're going to change uh, the rules so that we can actually, you know, uh, send data. So we can do the, the request to send data to the database. So we want to allow to read and write. So here where it says false, so we'll just change it for true and then we'll say publish. All right, so we have done that and then let's go back to where it says data and this is where our collection is going to be. So this is where you're going to find, you know, whatever you push into the database. So this is where you're going to have all the data we're going to push. Right now we don't have anything and we're going to add the data here. You can add it manually as well, but we'll just do it from Visual Studio. So we're good with this. 
So you can just clo close that configuration. All right, so we'll just go to app.js and right now I just have this text here and I have the background that I changed to that color. So if you wanna change the background, you can go to index.css and just change the background to whatever I have here. So let's just go back to app.js and we're just gonna create a form now. So we'll just say, uh, so we'll keep that div there and we'll just uh, rename it emails. So we'll, the class name will be emails and here I wanna say form. So this is just simple HTML and then I'll just call it, you know, the class name will be just form. All right, so inside of this, we'll just have like a paragraph that's gonna be like, you know, sign up to our newsletter or something like that. All right, and then we'll just have like a simple like input. All right, and that's gonna be of type, it's gonna be email. Okay, and well, you don't need this because this is a uh, doesn't well. I think it does need the closing here just because we're doing uh, React, but usually that doesn't need the closing tag. Say uh, button. This is gonna be submit. Okay, let's go see what we have. So that's what we want. So sign up to our newsletter, and then we have the form here, and you can type stuff here and submit, right? All right, so let's just give it some styling just so that we can make it look better. So I'm just gonna say class name and then we'll just say emails or email button or something like that. And then here the same thing, we'll just give it like a class name and this is just gonna be email input. All right, so now we have that so now we have given it like a class name so that we can style it, go to app the CSS. And I'm gonna change this since I don't have that component anymore. We'll just say emails. And if, you, and if I save, you'll see that it changes the color. So at least that we know that that's working. So I'm gonna change the color to white. And then text align, we'll keep it center. Then the margin. And once again, you can just play with this. This is just to to make it look better right now. And then the font will make it a little bit bigger as well. We just use this, say extra large or something like that. All right, let's save and see what we have. So right now we have to sign up to our newsletter and you see it looks a little bit better now. So now let me just style the input and the, and the button really quick. So we'll just say email maybe the height will change and we'll just say 30 pixels all right so now you can see that it looks a little bit better and well let me just add like a placeholder as well so we'll just put here like placeholder it's gonna be email let's see how it looks now so now you now it says email so that looks better all right so the next thing that we want to do is implement the logic, right? So we're going to be using use state to manage the state of the input. So we'll, we have to import that. So we have to import use state. So import use state from React. All right. And let's see, what else do we need? So we also need the database. So from the config file, right? So we export it here. So now we need to import it in here. So we'll say import, um, so DB from, and then you can, since it's in the same folder, you can just do this and firebase.js or just firebase. All right, so now we have that, we have use state. So let's just create like a, so like what's gonna hold the state of the input. So we'll just say input, say set state, Set, set input and then this is just gonna be equal to all right so now we have that so the next thing that we want to do is we want to go to input so right now nothing is gonna happen if if I type into this box so let me just so if I submit it, it just reloads the page but it doesn't do anything so since it this is like a type email that's why you know, it's telling me you need to like include an email as something that has like a, that looks like an email. 
So right now nothing is gonna happen. And I can, um, well, I don't have, we haven't set this to anything. So there is nothing that I can, I was gonna do console log input, but it's not gonna show anything because we don't have anything. So I'm just gonna add the value here. So the value of this input is gonna be, it's gonna be input this input here and then we have to handle you know we'll say const handle or input handler because we have to handle whatever you know the users are typing right so then we'll say we'll just create like a, like a function here and then we'll say set the input to whatever you know the user is typing e target that value and we have to add this input handler where the the input is so we'll just say on on change and we'll just say use the input handler All right so now we're tying this field here to the value here all right so now if we do console.log and then the input will see that whatever the user is typing is tied to to this input here so let's let me just open the console and here we put like you know b a l or whatever you can see like you know it's it's working so it's showing us whatever the user is typing so that's good all right so the next thing that we want to do is just go back here so we'll just delete that we'll say const and right now we have to handle the submit right so we say submit handler all right so we're just gonna say prevent uh, default so this is what you use for the forms and then we'll say if you know at the, at the moment of submitting there is like an input so if the input exists or if there's something here then we'll add like a you know like a new document document to the collection right so usually some of the imports here just get they will get added by themselves if not then we'll just do it ourselves but let me see if it works so add so you can see here as it says add doc so that's the one that i want and then i want to say collection so that's another one that we need so you can see that they get you know imported by themselves so if, it, if that doesn't happen, then you can just add them yourself here. All right, and now the way that we add collections for this new version of Firebase is like this. So we use DB, which we already imported, and then the name of the collection, which is gonna be emails in my case. All right, and then we'll say, you know, what we want, what's the data that we want is, you know, the email is gonna be equal to the input which is this input here and then just say comma we'll say you know await so it's an asynchronous call sync and yeah and that's how it works uh, we haven't included here so right now it's not going to do anything so let me just go to where the form is and I can just put it here and we'll say on submit just use the submit handler submit handler all right all right so now we should be good all right so let's do like a quick recap here so we create our form then we had to create like an input handler so that we can you know manage whatever the user was inputting here and also that has to be tied to the value of input that we're going to send to the database in this case firestore and then we created like a submit handler which means that whenever you submit the form you know this value is going to get passed to the firestore and I think we're done here. So if we run our application, so let me just uh, reload it here. All right, so let's let's go to Firebase and let me show you that we don't have anything here. So I'll just reload it again as well, just to show you that we don't have anything. All right, there is nothing. So let's go and try it. So we'll just say test at gmail.com now we'll submit it and now this should go to the firestore so i already submitted it and something that you have noticed is that it didn't clear the form so we can just take care of that as well so if you go to the firebase let's uh 
you know, refresh it once again. Sometimes it does it by itself. Sometimes you have to do it. So now we should have our, our email here. All right, let's see. Yeah, so as you can see, we have created a new collection, which is called emails. And here we have our field, which is email, and then we have the email. So we have done it successfully, and this is for the newest version of Firebase. So let me just uh, fix this thing because when I, we want to clear it after, you know, submission, right? All right, so we want to say that after we submit, we want to clear, you will say set input is going to be equal to the initial state, which was having nothing, right? All right, so because, you know, the set input is whatever the user types, right? So we want to clear that after submission. All right, so now if we go back to, so where is the, the application? I have it open. Yeah, so it's here. All right, so let me just reload this. Now we'll just say test2 at gmail.com. We'll say submit and this should clear by itself. So now you can see that it has cleared by itself. Now another user can come and just say like test3 gmail.com and once again submit and so forth and so on. So now we should have three emails here. So now it has updated by itself. We have test demo, uh, the first one that we created. This should be three and this should be the second one. Yeah, so now we have it. And another thing, like if you want to know like when they submitted this, you can also add like an extra field here, which is, uh, we'll just call it timestamp. And then it's just going to be like the server timestamp. And you also like import these from the Firebase Firestore and it got auto imported there. Say comma. Oh, and I think, I think you have, you need to have it like, like this. I think it sh should be like that. Let's let's see if it works like that. So let me just go test it once again. I would just say test4 at gmail.com and you should give me the time when it was submitted. All right, so now we have four here. So that should be this one, I think. Yeah, so now as you can see here, we have November 9, 2022. And then you know the the time when it was submitted so you can do that yeah so now we have our sign up form working now we can capture users emails and you can start growing your database uh, with the emails of your users so if this video was helpful uh, just leave a comment uh, let me know what videos you want me to to make and i'll see you on the next one i appreciate it thank you don't forget to subscribe